right, so today I'm going to be talking about InfluxDB's Edge to Cloud Vision AI demo. So in this talk, I'm going to go over a few, um, a few key things that is setting InfluxDB 3.0 apart from its old versions and some of the great features we can look forward to and then how this demo kind of wraps it all up together. Now one thing to note here is that I'll be doing a little bit of uh, the demo kind of live. I'll be showing a video, but it won't be a true live demo, but there is a GitHub link and we'll be doing the live demo at Microsoft Build in person. So first let's do a quick overview of the Influx TB Cloud. So this is the typical architecture of in deployment that we expect for Influx DB 3.0. So the big thing here is that we're still expecting for the most part all the same kind of data sources, all timestamp data, whether that comes from metrics or sensors, events and devices, etc. Um, one big thing that sets InfluxDB 3.0 apart from InfluxDB 2 is the fact that we now can accept more than metrics. We can also accept traces and events. So that is one feature. Data collection is staying relatively the same. It's going to be Telegraph, which if you're not aware of, I'll go into a little bit when we get into the demo, as well as the client libraries. We're still going to be able to do data storage and transformation, obviously, but the difference now is that we are focusing on being able to query your data and transform it using SQL instead of our uh, previous language Flux. And data visualization and analysis. So another big feature uh, that this SQL is allowing, this SQL integration is allowing us to do is we can integrate with more tools thanks to the fact that our file format is now SQL compatible. So that will allow us to in the future hook up to things like Power BI and Tableau, which we're currently working on right now, uh, as well as other great and awesome tools. We just, it, it just opens a lot more doors going forward. So some of the key features is unlimited cardinality. So with unlimited cardinality, this is one of the big reasons why we can now finally uh, do logs and task. It's because before you would have a limited amount of tags that you could have on your data value, mainly because of the way that things were queried. It would just make it very slow if you had quite a lot of uh, tag values. And tag values can be things like a uh, string value, like a location, or uh, in the case of trace, it could be multiple different types of IDs, etc. So basically with this, you of course have your time series value, you have your timestamp, and then you also now can have a lot of metadata attached to it is what I like to call it. So this was what is now going to be allowing us to store logs and traces. Native SQL support. So most developers and data scientists are already pretty familiar with SQL. This has been something that people have been asking for uh, for many years when it comes to Influx. We've Definitely heard people before talk about how they wish that we would do allow SQL, how they are more comfortable writing in it, and we are now uh, gonna have native SQL support. Uh, we're still going to be allowing you to do stuff like downsampling, aggregation, and other key features that people uh, not only expect us to have, but are looking for us to offer. So that will still all be in the new version as well. It's just gonna be done via SQL. And another big thing to note here is InfluxDB 3.0 will also be supporting InfluxQL, which uh, is the SQL-like version uh, that had been available in, um, in InfluxDB 1. So we are going to be having back support. High performance data ingestion and querying. So InfluxDB 3.0 is designed to handle high writes and query loads. Now, that being said, it was always designed that way, even in versions one and two, but now with our uh, new engine, it will be even faster. Uh, we're soon going to be releasing data, beautiful graphs and such, that will be able to show you a little bit more about how much faster this data ingestion and querying is. So we'll be able to do comparisons and other such things. Higher compression on low cost object store. So Influx DB 3.0 persists data using the Apache Parquet file format. It's a pretty popular open columnar data format known for its high compression. Uh, so this is gonna reduce the storage cost by more than 70% and allow developers to store their data forever without blowing their budgets. So this is very important because a lot of people need to store their data at a, uh, I suppose you could say uh, with its very, um, 
sorry guys, I'm trying to think about how to explain this. Basically, instead of downsampling, like you need to keep your data, you need to know every single second what was happening in, um, in your value for the past month. You'll be able to do that at a much lower cost versus before it might have cost you quite a bit to keep your data that, that, uh, that intricate. You would have wanted to downsample instead to maybe uh, knowing your value average over a month or so, so that way then you weren't storing all that finite data, but that will no longer be a problem. Seamless integration with observability tools. So this is uh, obviously something that we've always worked on as a company, but we now have a new Flight SQL integration with Grafana, which is a new integration specifically that will allow you to query your data out of InfluxDB using SQL, but through Grafana. We also have integrations with Jaeger, which is for um, tracing. It's a visualization library for tracing and open telemetry so we're currently working with the open telemetry project we have a few engineers working on it and then we also are currently working on our own hotel collector we kind of have our own version in telegraph right now but we're hoping to get an official version that we can put on the hotel um the hotel project in the future and of course we've always been able to integrate with things like pandas and other data science tools, but we are also looking to expand that as well as make sure that everything works with the new SQL querying. For the most part, most, um, if anything, it's the opposite. Most data science tooling requires you to use SQL. So this is actually a much more, uh, this will allow us to uh, allow people to use a lot more data science tooling in the future. So really quick. So this is a demo that is best seen, I suppose you could say in person, but basically what it does is it will detect people. So it's using Vision AI at the edge to detect as people walk by it and basically begin to count them. This can be helpful in a real world use case, for example, in a train station. So we actually have a company out of uh, Canada, I believe, who is using not, not something this per se rudimentary, but a little bit more of an advanced version of this and obviously much larger scale where they are tracking the amount of people who go in and out of a station. And the reason that they're tracking this data is because it is important to know for safety how many people are within a station. There are um, you know, fire limits and such. There's, there's a limit to how many people you can safely have. And it's also good for them to be aware of high and low times for traffic. So if there are uh, capabilities to add more trains on certain routes during certain times, maybe certain events. That's always something to be aware of. But the big thing is the safety portion of it. It's to know that uh, there's not too many people in the station at once. So that's the overreaching um, inspiration for this project. But how it works is the and I and on my next slide, I'll also show um, I'll show a few more uh, paragraphs that kind of explain each piece of this. But just to give a quick overview. Uh, DeepStream is a uh, NVIDIA offering that allows you to, I'm actually going to go to this really quick. It's, it's developed by, it's a open source SDK that allows developers to build high performance real-time video analytics applications. Sorry, this was just a little bit easier for me than trying to remember exactly how to explain this. But basically with this intelligent video analytics, that is how we were actually uh, counting how many people are within the video, within the camera stream. So in real life, what happens is this device right here, the, the nano device goes ahead and it counts people by being hooked up to a webcam and pushes it through the NVIDIA software. Finally, we get those data analytics through our MQTT broker. And with that MQTT broker, we use Telegraph to actually push it into our Edge device. Now, when we do this demo live, the Edge device is normally a laptop, but what this allows us to do is um, if we have outages, this allows the data that is on the Edge device to be stored while we wait for reconnectivity. So that's one of the, the big things about the Edge is so that way then you're still storing that data. You're not losing it as you lose connection to the cloud. It's just being stored on the Edge device. Uh, and the other thing is we also have a replication uh, queue and we have uh, down sampling queries as well. We have some examples of those within the GitHub project. So with that, you could, uh, you could down sample your data on the edge device. And with that, after we've done all that work, all we have and whatnot, we go ahead and we send it up to our bucket in the cloud called Detection ML Ops. 
And I'll show a video in a second here that kind of shows off what this looks like inside of our bucket as well as the Grafana visualization that we have. And again, this demo is going to be done live at the booth, and so it's a pretty good opportunity to check it out there. So you already kind of saw this slide when I briefly touched on what NVIDIA DeepStream is, but I'm just going to leave this up for about 20 to 30 seconds so you can kind of just read everything that's here. Most of what this is talking about is just all the different tooling. And one thing I guess I'll go ahead and explain now is Telegraph, for those of you guys who don't know what Telegraph is. So Telegraph is an open source data collection agent. Uh, it's normally used for gathering metrics from various sources. There's about 300 different input and output plugins. So the output plugins take data from InfluxDB and port them to other tooling. The input is pretty straightforward. It puts the data in. Now that being said, uh, Telegraph is completely open source and it is used by other um, TBs, other softwares, other applications. And a lot of the open source input and output plugins are supported by the companies, developers, and software that uh, benefit, I suppose you could say, from it. So like our AWS ones are normally somewhat maintained by AWS developers, for example. But the overreaching caretakers, uh, we are the caretakers of Telegraph. We're the ones who make sure for the most part that nobody uh, pushes up malicious Telegraph code. And I already explained what NVIDIA DeepStream is, and you're welcome to go check that out online. Obviously, I've talked uh, quite a bit about what InfluxDB 3.0 has going for it and some of the new features. And then uh, for those of you guys who are not aware of what MQTT is, it basically is facilitating an exchange of messages between a published slash subscribe model. And again, you can go ahead and check out more about this and grab the QR code that I showed in the last slide that actually will take you to this GitHub project. So here's a quick video. So this is a video of what it would look like if you were gonna go ahead and go into that bucket to see your data. So with this one, what we're getting here is the confidence amount. So that is the amount of people so far that it's seen. So when we did this on, um, on my computer, it was just me walking in front of it. Like I said, this is a really great demo to do in person at a conference where you have lots of people walking by so the camera can count a lot more people. But it's just me in my house, I'm afraid, so there wasn't quite as much people walking by as you might hope. And you can also view the raw data, which would allow you to see uh, this data in more of a table format versus a graph. Sometimes that can be quite helpful, obviously. And then we also offer a Grafana dashboard for this one as well, where it has things like detection status, the amount of people, the average confidence. I'm not going to go through the you know entire Grafana dashboard. You can go ahead and get it installed yourself and check it out when you're on there. But yeah, this is a really cool way of displaying all this data. And we understand that a lot of people like to use Grafana with InfluxDB, which is why we built this dashboard for it. Oh, whoops. There we go. And this is all coming soon onto Azure. So right now our InfluxDB 3.0 is available on Amazon and very soon it's going to be available on Azure. We're hoping to get that rolled out uh, pretty soon. And this, this video is being recorded a little bit earlier. So I don't actually have a definitive date, but we are hoping that by the time that we go to Microsoft Build, we'll have a more definitive date to announce when exactly that is happening. And now I just like to show off some learning resources. So if you want to try it yourself, we have influxdata.com. That's where you can go and learn about this via our website. This is where you can find our cloud as well as our other solutions, including our open source. And the Influx community is where all of our projects live. So maybe you don't want to do a Vision AI demo, but you're more interested in our Plant Buddy project where we uh, use sensors to monitor the health of a plant. These are all super cool projects. You can come and check them out there at the Influx community. And a few more resources for getting started. Again, that's going to be that cloud website. Slack is where you can come and ask us questions. Uh, the GitHub Influx community, our docs and blogs where you can find information and updates, and InfluxDB University, which is a free learn at your own pace uh, platform. So you can go ahead and check that out and learn as you want, and it's completely free. And that 
is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.